I'm Ron Jorlock, and I'm the director for the Center for Preaching and Pastoral Leadership. And I'm here with my friend Paul Reese, uh, who pastors Charlotte Chapel out in uh, Edinburgh. That's right. Edinburgh, Scotland. Edinburgh. Edinburgh, Scotland. Edinburgh. Edinburgh. Edim Doesn't Edinburgh. matter though. Edinburgh's fine. There we go. That's what they seem to call it out here, but Edinburgh, yeah. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. Uh, you are a, a pastor there. You've been pastoring there for how long now? Yeah, it's just come up to 10 years now. I've okay. been there. Yeah, uh, we, we previously pastored a church in Spokane, Washington, here in the U.S. Okay. For, for nearly eight years. Uh huh. And then the Lord called us over there. And so, yeah, it's been 10 years at Shaw Chapel. Wow, 10 years. Now, I saw in your bio that you, uh, prior to coming into pastoral ministry, that you had a career in dentistry. Is that yes, right? Yes, that's right. Yeah. yeah my right. first trade was teeth. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I, I grew up in a sort of a brethren uh, background where there were no paid gospel ministers. Uh -huh. And so we were given, you know, you're just basically as thrown in the pulpit. Um, to see if you'll sink or swim. Mm -hmm. And um, so there was a lot of ministry going on and uh, dentistry was what was paying the bills. But over time, I felt the Lord was kind of booting us towards full-time paid gospel ministry. Yeah. Although yeah. I was reluctant, but it, it, it eventually took place. Okay. Now, uh, are, did you have any type of, um, of, of lineage in uh, any type of vocational ministry or... Uh, no, um, um, no. I, I think I, I was the first uh, paid pastor. Wow. Uh, my dad teaches or used to teach electronic engineering. Okay. My grandfather was a miner. My other grandfather was a farmer. So yeah, uh, yeah. No, it's it's. But we but, but but the gospel came into my family on my mother's side from my great grandfather and on my father's side by my grandfather. So the gospel has been passed down. So there's been committed Christians who've. Uh, done their day job and been stuck into the local church. Certainly okay. I've been in a community where my, my dad turned down be, being professor a number of times because he was an elder and he wanted to give mm. his time to the local church. So mm. I grew up in a home where uh, the gospel was proclaimed, lived, and, and the centrality of the church was key. We were dragged along to everything and mm -hmm. we were given a strong taste. So consequently, although there's been no ministers in the family, uh, all my brothers, I've got two other brothers, all three of us are in paid gospel ministry. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow, wow. Yeah. So, so when did you sense, uh, as you were uh, living life as a dentist, uh, yeah. that God was calling you to, uh, to local church ministry? Well, um, we, I was getting asked to do a lot, mm -hmm. and uh, I didn't have a clue what I was doing. So I, I took nine months out, I did the Cornhill training course in London in 93, mm -hmm. 94. Mm -hmm. There's a, a man there called Dick Lucas who mm -hmm. started up the mm -hmm. Proclamation Trust. Yes. And they ran a one year course. And David Jackman was the man who uh, was teaching the course back then. I think I was the second year. And after doing that and ha getting help to know what I was doing, I was doing preaching before, I didn't know what I was doing. Uh -huh. So they helped us understand how do you dig in the text, how do you move from the text to a sermon, and some really helpful things like that. So then I, uh, I came back to Scotland. Uh, I'm married to a Scottish lass. and. Um, I basically did um, three days of teeth, the self-financement of self for four days of ministry. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, uh, and after a few years of that, um, I had a three week period, about four churches got in touch and said, we'd like to pay you to be a full-time pastor. And I, I took that as really God giving us a kick up the backside yeah. to head that way. So it was, and I turned them all down uh -huh. and went to theological college, went to Moore College in, in Sydney, Australia. Okay, okay. So that was kind of the process. Yeah. I was just get, got stuck in, and people just kept asking me to do more. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now you have uh, just by what you've said over the last few minutes, uh, you have been here in the states. Yeah. Uh, you've been in the UK. Mm. Uh, you've been in Australia. Yeah. Uh, so you've seen a, a good bit of of the world over the years, uh, and and you've obviously been involved in ministry in all of those different areas too. Uh, what are some similarities and differences that you've noticed, at least? As, in terms of how we approach ministry uh, in those different places? Yeah, that's a big question. Yeah. <laughs> that's a big question. Yeah. I mean, fundamentally, uh, whether you're an Aussie, a Brit, or an American, um, you, apart from Christ, are spiritually lost. Mm -hmm. Christ is the only Savior. Mm -hmm. We need God's Word. We need someone to preach the Word, show us the Gospel. Christ is the answer. So, you know, it, it, it's just as much, as a, much a miracle uh, from someone to be spiritually dead, to be made alive in Christ uh -huh. in America as it is in, in the UK. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the, the commonalities. Yeah. Um, 
in, in America, it seemed a lot easier to gather a crowd. Mm. Uh, you know, you could, um, people would come, people were positive uh, to Christianity mm -hmm. in a way that in the UK, um, uh, not so much. Mm -hmm. You know, no one, no one, nominalism has died really. Mm -hmm. you, the, the numbers have gone through the floor and very few people would now go, would go to church on Sunday because it's the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. It's a very strange thing to do and you're mm -hmm. a bit of a weirdo to be a Christian. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually you might be a bit dangerous. That's the new cultural shift. You might be a bit of a, a hater. Yeah. The phobic word gets thrown around a lot, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. So it, it seems to me that it might be easier to get a crowd in America mm -hmm. uh, than Britain. Mm -hmm. uh, but actually, in truth, it's just as much a miracle um, for people to really believe and to be born again and all yeah. the rest of it. And it's the same thing. Preaching yeah. the word of God, preaching the gospel, mm -hmm. independence upon the spirit, and uh, God does his work through his word. Yeah. Well, I'll be honest, uh, in, in the States here, it seems like our days are numbered a bit as well. Mm. Uh, it seems like we're we're trending towards uh, uh, Europe. Um, yeah. Uh, the, the the public square, kind of the civil religion. Yes. Uh, it, it seems to be uh, uh, eroding, mm. uh, and so Christianity, I, I think, is becoming much more um, what it what it was intended to be. But we're, we're going back to Greco-Roman culture, I think. Yeah, yeah, There's yeah. no privileged status mm -hmm, for Christians. Mm -hmm. it's, we've, we've gone back via past Constantine now. Right, we? Back right. Back to being a despised minority a little bit. Mm -hmm. And, you know, actually the gospel flourished in those days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I'm not uh, pessimistic. I actually think these are good days. Yeah. And I, and I found it kind of challenging when I was in uh, Spokane. I keep meeting these people who thought they were Christians. I had to spend the first half of my time trying to show them that they weren't Christians. Wow. And hmm. then you could show them what it meant to be a Christian. Sure, sure. In, in the UK, it's a bit quicker because they don't, they don't think they're a Christian. Yeah. So, and increasingly, you've got a generation rising up who are completely ignorant. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't mean that in a pejorative way. They just don't know. They just mm -hmm. don't know. Mm -hmm. And um, so they haven't rejected the gospel. Most of them haven't heard it. Yeah. They haven't heard it. And they walk into church. We're on a city center street. We have, still have people who walk in the door going, what is this? What mm -hmm. is this? What's mm -hmm. going on? Yeah. What, what, what are you about? And there's an openness to hear. Mm -hmm. So we're now at a post-post-Christian stage where perhaps there's a fresh openness. Mm -hmm. Because I, I would say guys in their 60s, 70s in Scotland rejected the gospel a long time ago. Or they, they rejected what they thought was the gospel. Mm -hmm. They rejected a sort of a nominal churchiness, be nice, God's nice, you're nice sort of, mm -hmm. sort of message. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. But there's a new, new generation coming up where there's an openness and there's more brokenness. Mm -hmm. People are coming in going, yeah, this doesn't work. Yeah, yeah. So in 10 years that you've been uh, over at Charlotte, um, and, and just to clarify, that's, that's Charlotte in Scotland, <laughs> uh, uh, not Charlotte, North Carolina. Not Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, right. But, but uh, what have been some of the some of the wins, if you will, some of the joys that you've experienced in 10 years of ministry there? Well, I suppose it's just, it's just the joy of seeing get, people get saved, isn't mm. it? Mm. And um, I think it's a wonderful thing that we're seeing people come in the door, uh, sad, uh, broken, and you see them now singing the praises of King Jesus, knowing mm. that they've been saved. And that, you know, that to me is the joy of seeing um, lives transformed by Christ to God's yeah. glory. That's the thrilling thing. Yeah. Um, we've had the privilege of um, moving location. Uh, I, when I came to Shark Chapel, it had been in that location about 180 years. Mm. But I didn't think the building really was helpful working for us. Mm. Uh, the Church of Scotland, which is the national church, the Presbyterian Church of Scotland, is in massive decline. Mm. And uh, they, they keep merging congregations. Well, a, a building, uh, was empty and I knocked on the door and we began a conversation and we've moved location to this new location it's a bigger building and I think within about six months we added another hundred people just I think location wow. wise wow. That's amazing. Uh, and so that's exciting to see mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah uh, and it's lovely now to see children we, we, we changed the Sunday school curriculum uh, when, I, when I got there we, 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 we went with the children desiring God curriculum that came mm -hmm. out of um, um, Over in uh, Bethlehem. Bethlehem Baptist, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. right. And it's been amazing to see now children who've come up through that curriculum where they're getting systematic theology mm -hmm. with a robust confidence in God. And I'm going to sure. be excited to see what this generation does yeah. as, it, as, it, yeah. as it interacts and yeah. uh, moves up. 
Yeah. So I think that's been exciting to have a very long-term view of discipleship, mm -hmm. a generational view. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I guess over 10 years, you, uh, you, you've you seen a little bit of the um, of the life stages, you know, as, um, <coughs> excuse me, you have some folks who uh, who start off when you were, when, when you started off there and say if they were in elementary school and now they're talking marriage, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, or, or folks who had young kids and yeah. now they're sending them off to college, you know, things like that. Uh, that's one of the joys of pastoring. It is, it is definitely. And um, the other thing that's happening is because we're a university town, we've got four mm -hmm. universities where uh, we've got maybe 120 students who would come and study the Bible midweek on a Wednesday night. We've maybe got 50, 60 international students for whom English is a second language mm -hmm, mm -hmm. meet on a Friday night. And out of that, we have the opportunity to disciple them all, encourage them all, but we're also tapping a few of them on the shoulders and say, would you think about doing a ministry apprenticeship with us mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and getting a taste of ministry? And they do a sort of a, a, a Bible, a Cornhill type course like I did, sure. maybe over a couple of years, and they'll do some ministry in the church. They'll, they'll see what it's like. Mm -hmm. And out of that, we'll help them discern, is the Lord calling you to gospel ministry or not? Mm -hmm. And if we feel that he is, that there's the sort of the convictions, the character, the competency, uh, to be a paid gospel worker. We've got a pastor and training program. We link up with Edinburgh Theological Seminary, which is uh, the college that trains the uh, Presbyterian Free Church of Scotland. Mm. It's still very evangelical, very mm -hmm. orthodox. Mm -hmm. And so we send our guys there, and uh, we have one in each year, so that we are, uh, they come and sit in on elders meetings, they see what church life is like, and we intentionally put into them with the hope that we'll be sending out guys, and it's happening already, who are going to revitalize churches. Uh, there's two lads have gone out to do, uh, one is to revitalizing a church in the borders in Scotland, another guy's gone to assistant to help a, a very good brother in Musselburgh. Mm -hmm. uh, Lord willing, the, the, the Adam who's just finished, he will go to plant a church in in Queensferry. So, wow. Wow. so uh, it will, will, next year we'll have had the privilege of planting three churches within four years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we'll need a big, we'll need a big breather uh, sure. The treasurer is looking nervous. Yeah, so, yeah. But that's been exciting too. That is exciting. To, to train guys to get, because we, we need many more gospel workers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know, pray to the Lord of Harvest. Yeah. To send them more workers. And I think where he's put us, we've had the privilege of playing a part to try and turn some more out. I, you know, it's still small, but we're trying to play our part to yeah. send them more. I love it. I love it. Churches planting other churches. That's that's exactly what we love to see. Mm. Um, you preached in chapel earlier today, and uh, when you preached, you you really meditated on the love of God. Mm. You know, uh, uh, in Romans five, and how God has demonstrated His love for us uh, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Mm. Um, how does that that gospel message? Uh, the message of the love of God in Christ, uh, and, and of course proclaimed through the gospel. Uh, how does that shape a church? Um, yeah. How, how, you know, I know that's dear to your heart. Mm. Uh, how does that shape a church? Well, it's everything, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, I think we talk about in membership class that you're thinking about basically joining a family that's on mission. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the church mm. is not yeah. a book club mm -hmm. where we've just got a curious interest in an ancient book called the Bible. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the church is a lifeboat, mm -hmm. and he's put us in a sea where there's lots of people eternally drowning. Yeah. And and, and the point is, if you want to be a member of this church, you need to be on mission with us because we've got to we've got to get busy. It's not about how comfortable we are in the lifeboat. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. we've got to have that outward look constantly to how we can help bring people on board. Yeah. And uh, I suppose it's deep convictions and the knowledge that God does love this sinful, rebellious world. That Christ did come to die for sinners, you know, yeah. of whom I'm the worst, says Paul, and we all have a sense of that, for a peculiar sense of our own worseness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I think out of that, when you, when you know the joy of salvation and um, you know the lostness of people, the gospel will shape you to be a church that keep, keeps looking outward yeah. to reach people. But also I think uh, we've been helped by the CCF uh, guys just to see that uh, actually the gospel too is the basis of our sanctification and uh, the word of God will speak to, to the ongoing way we are saved. You know, we have been saved, 
we will be saved. We are being saved by the gospel. And so the, the gospel is the means of sanctification. Mm -hmm. So the gospel being at that, I mean, you've got, yeah, it's the very heart of what church life is about. It's the, yeah. it's the heartbeat, hopefully. Yeah. So holding up the centrality of Christ um, as we preach the word of God and, and looking to him as king and savior, uh, his redeeming work, it, it drives our mission and it drives our sanctification. And um, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, hopefully, it, I hope it is part of our DNA. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I think that's all the time that we've got for, uh, for today. Uh, any closing words that you'd wanna say, uh, brief words to pastors? Sure, yeah, well, um, <clears throat> I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a pretty average bear. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm not got the biggest brain or, or the biggest gifts. But what I found is that if we just give ourselves to uh, preaching the word of God, uh, God's word does the work. And uh, this is what I've seen is if, you know, I've slog away in my pulpit, uh, slog away in my, <laughs> it probably feels a slog in the pulpit, but slog in my study, give myself to week by week preaching, then we're seeing um, lives being transformed by Jesus to the glory of God as the word does its work in our congregations to so just keep at it I think uh, uh, it's not about me um, uh, it's, it's about him and that's what keeps me going yeah pastor thank you very much thank you nice to meet you Lord, Lord bless you